What up, Dad Nerds? In this quick tutorial, we're going to be going through my top three favorite things from the Analytics tab in Tableau. Specifically, we're going to be looking at totals, then we're going to look at uh, average lines, and then finally look at reference lines. And then also I have a nice little bonus towards the end of another feature that I like to use. So let's jump right into Tableau. For all of these examples, we're going to be using the Tableau Superstore data set, which has uh, information on sales and profits uh, for different categories and subcategories and uh, different other information. So let's look at dip, uh, the sales for different categories and subcategories. So I'll double click, put categories in here, and then also double click and put subcategories in here. And then finally, I want to look at, like I said, I want to look at the uh, sales. So I'll come up here and I'll double click sales. And from here we can see that four different categories, it's uh, categorized into its subcategories and then these are the sum of sales uh, for each of these subcategories. But what else we wanna go further, we wanna know, hey, what are the different totals for all of these different uh, ways we aggregated the data? Well, we can go into, right here we have the data tab, uh, to the left hand side of the screen, we're gonna go into the analytics tab. And that's where it has a lot of these features that we're gonna be going over today. So what we're gonna focus on is totals for this example. So I take totals and I can either drag it into subtotals or the column grand totals. So we'll start with subtotals first. And what this is going to do is this is going to uh, provide the totals uh, for this uh, subcategory right here. So that's good, we can see the subcategories. But let's take it a little bit further. I wanna see what the sales is overall. And I take it and I can grab it and throw it into the column grand totals. And then from there, we can see that for all of the sales itself, these are the, the grand total itself. Um, as a little tip, uh, if you need to remove it, you can come in here and uh, right click category um, and then select uh, subtotals to remove it. And then also if we wanted to remove the grand totals, we could just um, click the grand totals itself and click remove. Let's take this a little one step farther to show how we can do row grand totals. So if it was aggregated in a different manner, so let's drag category up here. If it's aggregated in a different manner, I can take totals itself and then now the row grand totals is available because we have multiple rows, or sorry, multiple columns and therefore we can aggregate it on the row grand total. So this isn't just limited to data tables like this. Um, I can go ahead and remove this grand totals and here we have the different, uh, the same data shown, but let's put it into a bar graph. So we can take totals and drag it over and put it into the subtotals and then we can see for each of the subcategories what the actual uh, total is and maybe to, uh, be able to visualize this a little bit better. We can take subcategories and throw it into the colors pane um, and we can see the different colors a little bit better. For the next example, we're going to be going over the average line feature. So I'm going to, for this example, we're going to be looking at the sales over time. So I'll put in the order date, I'm double clicking it, and then I'm also putting in uh, sales. And it does a text pop up and we can come up to the show me card and we're gonna switch this to a uh, line graph. And I'm gonna close this graph out. Right now it's aggregated by year. Let's also, I wanna look at it down to the month level. So let's actually take the order date and throw it back up into here. And from there we can actually select, uh, so we have year right here and we will select a uh, month for this one right here. And so from here we have it aggregated in the a yearly bins and on a monthly basis. And this will help uh, with this example because now we're gonna take the average line and it's gonna take us, hey, do we wanna provide an average for the table, pane, or cells? Let's start by just doing the table itself. And as you can see, when we say table, we're doing the entire, all of the data within the table itself. If we take the average line, and come over here and put it on the panes, that's gonna actually do each of these individual segments here for a year, which may be uh, more useful. Um, so let's take this a step further. It's called average uh, line, but we can actually do a little bit more with this. So if I click the line itself and click edit, I can come in here and I can change 
uh, one, whether it's a line, a band, a distribution, or a box plot. I can change what we did previously of whether it's an entire table per pane or even down to the cell level. And then next what you'll find is pretty interesting is we can actually change which value we're using this on. So right now we're using sum of sales. And then it doesn't necessarily, we're not limited to average. So if we wanted to, we could do uh, minimum in this case. And then uh, for the label itself, you can do none, a value. So let's do a, a custom label and say this is the label. And then you could also do a custom tooltip or an automatic tooltip. And so we'll say this is a tooltip. Um, you can go as far as to format the line itself to what you want it. And if you want to do a fill above or a fill below to a certain color, um, you can do that as well. And then from there, we click OK. And you can see what, what it's done. It's like we selected. We've selected the minimum, filled in the below the line itself, added a label, and also added a tooltip. Now let's go into the third item to cover. So we'll go ahead and remove this uh, minimum line. For the third example, let's look at trend lines. And for this, we are going to take trend lines and drag it over. And you can select different ways to fit the data. Let's keep it simple right now and select linear. And it's going to fit it for each of the different panes we have selected here by, by year. If we wanted to, we can go ahead and uh, edit it and you can go in and actually change it to that other option. So let's go uh, exponential in this case. And whenever you fit it, you see I have a nice little curve to it. Uh, also, if you didn't want to do it by the different uh, panes itself, we could remove the years and you could get a fit over the entire data set. And similar to the average lines, we could come in and we could go to format and you can change how you want the line itself uh, appearing in the data set. So now that we covered the three features that I wanted to talk about, let's talk about the bonus, which is the forecast feature within Tableau. For the forecast example, we're going to be using the same line graph as previously used. So I'm going to take forecast, I'm going to drag it over here into this bin. And then we can see from here that for the sum of sales, it plots the forecast in the future and actually gives us values what it expects. So a little neat feature that we'll get to is you can see there's a little bit of seasonality with this and it takes into account that and you can also remove it. So let's uh, see what different, what we can adjust with the forecast. I can come click the line anywhere and click edit. Right now it's doing automatic, so it's plotted in the next 13 months. If I wanted to, I can change it to exactly one year or you can change it to whatever amount of time you want to look at or for a certain period. Um, how we're actually aggregating the forecasts. Right now we're using months as automatic, but you could aggregate in a different manner. And then the model itself. So I talked a little bit about uh, the seasonality is picking on, up on. You could change it to where it goes automatic without seasonality, but not as much data is gonna be shown here because our uh, data does have seasonality in it. And then finally, you can change the prediction interval um, and uh, how, how bit wide of a margin you wanna use for the estimate itself. And then finally, it gives a little description of uh, what we are providing the forecast on. So there you have it. We covered uh, my three favorite features in the analytics tab in Tableau. We went over grand totals. Next, we went over average lines. And then finally, we went over reference lines. As a bonus, we went into the forecast feature in Tableau. As a quick shout out, this video is part of a series where we go from loading the Tableau Superstore data set, which is in Google Sheets, into Tableau itself and making a dashboard and then finally launching it to Tableau Public to where anybody can access it. So if that seems interesting, please consider subscribing. It'd also be awesome if you like this video and leave a comment down below on what you'd like to learn about Tableau. Well, hope to see you again.